Now, you might find the results of the Pew survey shocking. That as many as one-third, one-third of all Catholics who attend Mass weekly don't believe in the real presence of Christ. I don't. I don't find it shocking at all. You see, I was once one of them. I was a practicing Catholic who did not believe in the real presence of Christ in the Eucharist. I had once believed. The part of the Catechism's definition of grace that resonates the most with me is that second part, that grace gives us the ability to hear and then respond to his call. You see, my brothers and sisters, God from the very beginning has always been calling out to us. Dennis, come this way, you'll be happy. Don't go that way, it won't work out. And I always envision this call of God's to be like a radio signal that's always being sent out. And the world, well, the world is always seeking to jam it. And the world is really good at it, am I right? I see a lot of bobbing heads, so I think I'm on safe ground here. And oftentimes we are our own worst enemies when it comes to this signal. We reach for our radios, we take the turning knob and we go to another channel. We reach the, for the volume knob and we turn it down. And this, this is where God's grace comes in. It is in the gift, this gift of grace par excellence, that gives us the ability to hear his call and to do something about it. And where, my friends, is God's grace most abundant? In the sacraments. And it, if all the sacraments, which is the one that it is most abundant in? The Eucharist, the Eucharist. This is why the Eucharist is so essential. In three of the Gospels, and again from Paul in 1 Corinthians, we hear Jesus say the very same thing at the Last Supper. This is my body. And let me assure you, the Greek word for use, estin, means is, just as we understand it here today. It means this actually is, this really is my body. This truly is my blood. If Jesus were speaking metaphorically, the Greek would have added a word to those words spoken by Jesus, just as we do today. If he were speaking symbolically, Jesus would have said something like, this is like my body, or this is a symbol of or represents my body. But he doesn't, he doesn't, because my friends, is means is, and Jesus meant exactly what he said. There is just no way that... St. Pope Paul VI famously wrote that the church exists to evangelize. And we, my brothers and sisters, we are the church. It's not this building that we're in, it's each and every single one of us. We are the church. And then according to St. Pope John Paul II, our mission field today, the mission field of today is our own neighborhoods, our very own pews. Given this, can you think of any topic, any topic more important to evangelize most especially within our church than that of the very source and summit of our faith. Now you may be thinking, Deacon, the Eucharist is such a deep topic. How can I possibly explain that to others? Well, let me present to you one simple, easy to remember way to do just this. Are you ready? Let's dive in. In the words of those four prophets known collectively as the talking heads, same as it ever was, same as it ever was. The teaching on the Eucharist began with Christ and went from there was passed on to the apostles, intact. And in turn, this truth was then handed on to the early church fathers, once again, unaltered. And last, and certainly not least, this truth has found its way all the way to the teachings of the church today same as it ever was, same as it ever was. The Catholic Speakers Organization has one goal, educating the world on what the Catholic faith actually teaches in a society that continually twists its truths.